speaking is something that geoprofessionals do all the time, but most geoprofessionals don't have any academic training in. And so this talk is just some tips and tricks on how to make your map go to like that next level of professionalism. The first uh, tip is something called a, the signal to noise ratio. And what you see here is something that has a lot of noise and not a lot of signal coming from it. So we can't really tell what's going on with this map. There's so much legend information, too much colors. This map is actually a lot better. It has 11% white space and legend to 89% map area. So it's a much better signal to noise ratio. But how do you get to this point? So I want to talk about three designers tricks to just get started. The first one oh, is to relax and um, let your subconscious do the work for you because that's really how you get your creative juices going. It's to let your subconscious work through it. And it really does work, so try it. Um, the second tip is actually to borrow. Uh, is it gonna... Oops. So the second uh, tip is to borrow somebody else's work to get started. And so, you know, you copy the legend of the colors that you like, and really in the process of putting your own data in there, you make it your own. Um, the third tip is to use layout sketches. So just get away from your computer, use pen and paper, and make a bunch of these things. Because the first few you come up with probably aren't the ones that are going to be the best. You make a bunch, and that's how the professionals really get toward that you know, end design. Once you get started, though, it's like, well, how many elements are too many elements? You know, you got to make sure that it's something that's crucial to making the map understandable. This map by Matt Stevenson does a really great job of not having too much stuff on it, yet it's still understandable. This one is the London tube map, which is really famous for, I mean, simplicity, elegance, yet totally informative design, right? It's the 53rd iteration of this map. The first one was in 1889, so they've had a lot of time to work on it. Um, moving on to web mapping, this is something I actually saw a couple weeks ago. Five screenshots worth of instructions before they would let you click onto the map. Um, I'm thinking that a redesign is in order for something like this. So. There's actually another one that's a much better web map that are, you're going to see next, and it's the Innovista website. Um, and it really has context-sensitive help. I'm not sure this is working. Yeah, so it's got context-sensitive help going on there so that you actually just see the map first thing when you click on it. And um, then if you need help, you find the help that you need when you're on the map. So you don't go through all five pages of instructions. And to get to this point, there's another designer trick. It's called the peer review. And all designers do it, and we need to do it too. Um, we need to ask our peers, our colleagues, for help and feedback, critical feedback, in order to you know, get that critique that we need. And so this is an example of a map that I turned into Cardo Talk. And I thought it looked pretty good. Um, Cardo Talk's an online forum for cartography. And they added all these things. They're like way too much white space. And I'm like, really? And so this is my final product. I put a lot less white space in there, changed the colors, way more labels. So you can see it's a much better final product because of the peer review. And I think we all need to um, do that. So it takes a long time to make a really good map. This is by my friend and colleague, Christopher Walter. He's a professional cartographer, and you might say, oh, it's really easy for him. He's a professional. It doesn't take much effort. But actually, I would venture to say that it takes him, or a professional, a lot longer than it takes a novice. And why do I say that? Well, I say that because a novice doesn't know when the map isn't good enough. And so the novice makes the mistake of finishing the map before it's really gotten to that final stage where it is good enough. Moving on to map fashion. Um, color and color and color was all we had for the last two decades, which I think is because we could, because we had color monitors, we had color printers. Now I think we're moving on to that next stage of professionalism. Um, design aesthetics, we're going to have black and white maps, we're going to see just small punches of colors, more, more elegance and things like that. But um, moving on to some three really quick tips um, that you may not have heard before. One is uh, high resolution monitors. We can use serif fonts now that when we're designing for the web. 
The second is don't be afraid of your title. It should be the second thing anybody sees on the map. And the third is if you've got acronyms, lower the font size so that everything blends in together. The fourth, always check for errors. Spell check, spell check, spell check. There actually was a um, map in Scotland that had an error and people built a housing development in the wrong place because of the error on the map. This is my final map by Daniel Gray on Cardo Talk. Awesome map, simple. It's got major informative design going on here, elegance, and that's what we, the three things we should all strive for in our future map-making endeavors. Thank you.